The title here of the message will be a very, very simple message in 2018. What do you wish for? Success, trouble-free year, blessings, and this and that. And why I have uh, titled it, I didn't know how to title this message. Uh, I could have been this with that, we fix your gaze or whatever it is. So anyway, you will understand why I start like this. I have a question for you. How many uh, new pictures, videos, moving pictures, and wishes have you been forwarded this year? And December, you know, the last day of December, first day of January, like all of these GIF images and that moving, flash, 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 new year, new year, blessing, bing, bing, bang, bang, and all of this, and uh, j jokes, some are funny, some are uh, spiritual, some are prophet six declaring, and I declare that you will be rich, that I will do, <laughs> not, all the trouble are over, and whatever it is, so, how many of you have received many of these? I received so many. Ah, just leave me alone with these things. It's too, too many, too many. But also, what do you think of many of these messages? Aha, now you're looking at me. What does he mean by this? What do you, what do you think of these messages? Personally, I am surprised by many of these messages. And I am surprised that many of these messages are sent by Christian. Yes, yes. Because they have nothing Christian in it. I mean, there is no, no depth, there is no, I mean, there's good intention, yeah, I want you to be blessed, I want you to be happy, you know, that's, that's cool. Uh, you love me, you want something, but please, please, uh, be realistic as well. <laughs> you know, I haven't, I haven't received any wishing me to be holy. Have you received that? <laughs> No? Uh, have you received any uh, referring to you being a true disciple? No? The only one I would say, I was thinking about that, have I received anything really, really good? Yes, I'm thinking of one. <laughs> in, the, in the hundreds that I have received, I'm thinking of one. And also, the only group of people that have referred to serving God in the year are our missionaries from the Philippines. They are the only one who, that I remember, maybe I'm missing some, that have sent me a uh, wish about serving God, bearing fruits, uh, recommitting my life. There's only the mission or missionaries or pastors in the Philippines. They are the only one that I recall. Most good year wishes, as I just says, promise, even proclaim the end of your troubles and difficulties right now. <laughs> December 31, it's finished right now. And it promised the beginning of riches, blessing, a year of success, exempt of troubles, and everything will be new this year starting January 1 at midnight past one minute. <laughs> wow, that's really cool. But I, I, you know, I'm joking, but you will see, you, you know all these things. But really, what's different between December 31 and January 2018? Is there a real stop and beginning, like your life has stopped, clean swipe, and then, you know, like now, it's, everything is going to be new this morning when I wake up, get out of bed, forget everything that went wrong. Nothing has changed. The old just go on like it has not changed. The trouble you had last night is still tomorrow morning. The same, same thing. Do you agree with me? Yes. Yeah. So what's the big deal about January 1st? I don't know. I don't know what it is. The situation and the problem you face on December 31 continues into January 1, 2018. Let's look at the first scriptures this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. So, we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. That's kind of weird, though. How can you fix your things on something that cannot be seen? 
It really doesn't really make sense if you just read it like this. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. So what do we read in this text here? We read that we have troubles, and trouble seems to be real, and trouble seems that they will continue on. But as we are having, you know, we don't dream of a trouble year free. We just are realistic that we will be having trouble. But we will look beyond these troubles because we are Christian, because we have a God, because we know the scripture is really not only the, 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 these images wishing us uh, empty wishes, not to get discouraged by our, our, our trouble. Uh, we are looking on things that are more essential in our life, things that are eternal, things that pertain to God, the true values and relationship, true values and true success and everything. Of course, you and I, we hope for change. Is that right? That's maybe the, 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 good, the good thing about January 1st. It gives us just like... Uh, 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 it's just like a measure, a measure in time that, uh, okay, let let's me rethink. I want to get you know, a, new, a new beginning or some sorts of things like that. Of course, we hope for change, for trouble-free life, and for success. So even if tons of images and videos comes to your Facebook, WhatsApp, or e email inbox, it doesn't assure you that the year will be trouble-free at work, at home, and relationship and everything. You know, on, uh, on December 31, I received a very sad news from friends of us in Canada, people that we grew up together in the church, they're a bit younger than me. Their beautiful young daughter, we will show you the picture, unexpectedly died in France at 29 years of age. She's a mother of two very young child, children on December 31, unexpectedly, when trouble-free year wishes were sent all over the world on both sides of the country, on the ocean, she died. And then they announced to us this and we grieve with them. You know, her mother, to this beautiful girl, her mother, I don't know, she's here, Sylvie. When I was safe, she was a bit younger than me. She was a teenager in the church. Uh, because they accepted Jesus in their high school, her and her sister, both parents rejected them, kicked them out of their homes. And the church adopted them. So they, 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 they live with people in the church. They were rejected from the family. So she went through that. So I'm, I'm very close to, to them. And we, we are on Facebook. We write to each other all the time and everything. So I'm, I'm very sad. But that's, that's, that's a reality of December 31 and January 1st. How beautiful she is. 29 years of age and two children. She went to France, probably vacation, holiday vacation. What do you expect on a vacation? You expect fun, you expect going skiing, you expect seeing Paris, you expect, you know, romance, you expect something and then you die. And then you leave your mother and father and tears and, and all the trouble. And this is how 2018 begins. So many people start 2018 with the same old trouble and new troubles and worse troubles and worse crisis that comes. So anyway, I don't want to put you so down, but that's, I, I think that's worth thinking about that because this is, the real, this is real life. All the wishes we have received this year, this is not real life. This is real life. So let me ask you a question. What do you think really? Wouldn't it be more beneficial to be prepared for tough times and gen starting on January 1? What does the scriptures tell us that we should expect about the future, about the end times? Are we being announced like times of uh, trouble free and uh, easy life going? Or Jesus has told us uh, wars, rumors of wars, uh, famines and 
earthquakes and then increasing things and like this. So wh why are we caught on the blessing and the riches and the success and all of these things? Wouldn't it be more beneficial and more helpful to you and to me to be exhorted, hey, there's a new year, get smart, get ready to, for war, because this is what true life it is. I'm sure that uh, uh, Jessilita did not expect at the beginning of 2017 what she just experienced just a few weeks ago. When Sister Yvette came back from the U.S. maybe two years ago to, to join with her family. For those of you on the prayer WhatsApp, you have read desperate prayer requests about her family and everything. By the way, Sister Yvette is leaving on Wednesday this year to return to the U.S., so that's your last chance to say goodbye to her for, for a while and all the, the troubles that she has. You know, when, when you make a move and you change year, nothing changed, but you don't expect the worst or the crisis that will happen. Uh, so it would be more beneficial if you are ready for war and expecting to, to, to hold on to Bambalila, to, to God, and hold on to Jesus because you will need. I remember a message of Pastor uh, Mary Nolan a few years ago. I think it started like, all done is going to be a rough ride. That's the message, and maybe it was like a New Year message or something. I think it was a New Year message. That's the kind that the things that the, all done is going to be a rough ride. So, w what are the troubles that you are going to face this year? The disappointment, the hurt, and the, the crisis that you will have with finance, with people, with health issues, or whatever it is. We are human beings, we are mortal. We, we, we don't live forever. We have not been promised anything of this kind. But honestly, I, I truly wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I, I, I wish all of you a Happy New Year. I wish you a trouble-free year. I, I do wish you, and I do hope it seriously, that this is what you're going, that you're going to prosper, that everything's going to be, but I cannot guarantee it. But I wish, I wish for you. So are you going to be happy in the new year? How is going to be the level of your happiness in 2018? I read an article uh, claiming that the average time people feel happy per day was less than 10 minutes. And a more depressing article uh, uh, written in 2010 published in the Journal of Social Sciences in the U.S. says that 13 non-consecutive seconds per day of happiness. Think about that. And one day, people average in 2010 in the U.S. that have been surveyed says that the happiness that they felt lasted for 13 seconds non-consecutive, not a block of 13 seconds, but maybe 1.9 seconds here, 2 seconds there. And I that's quite depressing when you think about that. And this is like a rich country, like the American dream, and you know, all of this. And people really feel like that, that's what it says. And the breakdown showed that most of the happy moments, or the happy second, were recorded after a good meal. Ah, after a good meal. 1.9 seconds of happiness after a good meal, and in the bedrooms and married couple or something, 2.5 seconds of happiness. In Hong Kong, a recent survey by charity group Baptist Oi Kwan Social Service found that one on seven primary students showed signs of depression. How awful is that? In Hong Kong, one on seven, Hong Kong is not a bad place. It's a prosperous place. It's, it's the, the world, uh, Asia's world city. It's, it's modern. We get everything here. Good government, good police force, uh, little corruptions in comparison to, to many countries in the world. And this is what we find, that primary school children have uh, depressions. And while one ten suffered from severe depression and required some form of clinical treatment. And the latest World Happiness Report, published by the United Nations, Hong Kong landed in 71st place in the world. That's pretty low in comparison when you think about happiness 
the, it says the World Happiness Report. I don't know how they measure that and what kind of uh, questions they have, but anyway, just want to share that with you. So how are we going to be happy and successful in 2018? First of all, is it possible to be happy and successful in 2018? Is it possible? Let's look at our scripture here again. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. We see trouble now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. Fix your gaze is an expression of directions. Fix your gaze. You have a problem, the problem is real, but you choose to fix. It's an expression of hope. You fix your gaze on something else than the problem. It's like you choose an option. You choose to remain happy, even though the problem is there now. You choose to remain peaceful, to keep the peace in your heart, even though the problem is still there now. In spite of the trouble, you choose to be confident and you choose to remain holy. You're not going to compromise and go and practice the sinful ways of the world because trouble has come and I'm, you know, quitting, turning my back on God. I choose that because I'm looking to something that will last forever. The Apostle Paul's trouble in that chapter, 2 Corinthians, do you think they were big, real, or small? You know the uh, Apostle Paul? Yes. You know the Apostle Paul's le second letter to Corinthians, the context of it, first chapter? He's been fighting against the lions. He's been sure that he was going to die on that day, but he's been rescued by God. He's been whipped, he's been in perils on the sea, on the land and traveling, he's been beaten, he's been left stoned to death three times, I think. He's been whipped so many times, so many uh, whip uh, and all this. More than anybody else that we, we can think of. Do you think he was happy? Ap Apostle Paul, do you think? I'm asking you difficult questions to interpret. We were not there to see him, but generally by what you read, do you think that he was content, that he was uh, happy to be a Christian, that he had hope in his life? Yes. So how did he do that? Same is true with your trouble and my trouble. Or it should be true. It's the explanation of this text here has to do uh, with Let's click and look at the next one because it will help us to understand more the context. If you look at the verse 17 here, our present troubles in here so we don't look at the troubles we can see now. So now and present troubles are the same thing we are referring to. Because our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Well, this is true and not true because we in a way of speaking uh, out of context of these two verse that all troubles are not going to belong this we don't know I live with a, a rebellious teenager's daughter for about 11 years so maybe you say it's long or it's not long it was very long to me when she turned 14 years old I says, I cannot make it until she will turn 16. But it lasted until she turned 22. Her crisis started when she was 11. And it went from worse to worse. When I thought she cannot cross that line, she's at the top of the worst, she crossed that line and it went worse and worse and worse. Many of you who are in the church know a lot about it already. So is it long, 11 years? To go through in a family crisis and then and family crisis intensified and we and of course you're not uh, 24 hours seven days a week on the same crisis so sometimes there's a, a, a release of the crisis so you have a little bit of peace in the house and another crisis then a little bit of peace in the house and another one so it went like this for a long time so 11 years I think it's very long but if you look at this context here, it's not really that long. 
And uh, when she turned 22 years old, we baptized her here in Lighthouse. So wow, praise the Lord. Something good has happened at the end of this, this battle. So we don't know the, the, if it's going to be long or not long in terms of the year 2008, in terms of weeks and months, and, and the intensity of the trouble and the crisis that we are going through. But the, the, the explanation here is in comparison. If we compare the actual present momentary uh, trouble, it is light if you compare it with something that will last forever. It is heavy or it, this is an illustration of, of weight, a balance. Light or if you see that, that things here produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs that the, the way is so much bigger. My problem is very heavy, it's very real. But if I compare it to the eternal goal, the result of my faith, what I live for in Jesus, whoa, this eternal glory vastly outweighs this actual crisis that I'm going through. So the answer, the explanation is in the, 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 the comparison. If you compare it to, to what? If you are connected to the Lord, if you are deep in your word, if you know the promises of God, if you hold on to God and you know how to turn to, to the Lord in prayer instead of getting uh, depressed and everything. When you compare to the eternal weight of glory that lies ahead, our problems may seem lighter. When we, uh, a light affliction is, it says here, it's for a moment when compared to eternal uh, glory. So can I invite you at the beginning of this year to gaze into the eternal? Do you have trouble in your life? Will you have trouble in 2018? How big are your problems going to be? We don't know that. But God knows. God's with you. 2000 year is the continuation of 2017 and the continuation of 2016. Actually, I, I received one picture that made me laugh. And I says, that's the best one I've read so far. Uh, Eileen sent it. It's like, uh, it, it went like, uh, I'm going to do what I didn't do in 2016, that I promised to do in 2015, that I forgot to do in 2014, and all of this. Yeah, and it went like that. It says, this is the most realistic uh, one that I, have, that I have read. So I want to invite you this morning to pause with me this, as we start this new year and in a very realistic way what do we expect of 2018 should not be so different from the things of 2017, 2016 or whatever it is and the same nature uh, that all of us who are mortal human beings may face in this year we don't know what happens, uh, what will happen. My mother is 90 years old. Bridget's mother is 91 years old. So what are they going to, how many more years are they going to live, 2018? When we hugged each other and said goodbye before we came here, we, they both mothers promised that they would go through the winter, the Canadian winter, and they hoped to see us later in 2018. And we says, yes, yes, uh, be strong and take care of yourself. We hope to see you in 2018. Will it happen? I don't know. I think some of you know that, I said it in the past, um, when my brother died, he's, he was uh, three years older than me, that summer when I saw him last, it, he, he was not doing well. I think he had a drug problem and drinking. He's a very nice guy, very nice, and we've always been very close together, but something bothered him, and he was not pleasant that summer. And the last day when I saw him and I was returning to Hong Kong, he, he hugged me and he says, next time, when I see you, we'll go out and, you know, like, he, he says, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry I was not really doing fine and, I, you know, I messed up our time together. So next time when you come back, 
uh, we, we'll catch up and we'll be like the, in the old days. Next time I saw him, I spoke at his funeral service. He had a car accident, his, his body burned completely, the police could not recognize his body, and I spoke at his funeral service. And I read the letter that I had sent to him uh, years ago because my brother received Jesus, backslid, received Jesus, backslid like many times, and I was writing to him, I love you, think about Jesus, eternity. Uh, you don't know, maybe sometimes you may drive, have an accident and die, so come back to the Lord. So that letter was the happening in a way on the negative side. You don't expect the negative for your loved one. You always expect the positive. But we don't know what's going to happen. I myself, I am in a crisis right now this morning talking to you. Uh, that crisis that, that shocked me. It's only a few of you know, know about it from last night. Uh, something that uh, really shocked me unexpected and it will make my uh, the beginning of my 2018 very very hard for me and for my wife uh, i'm in a crisis but i have uh, decided to keep my peace and the lord and to uh, you know do and and retain my life and the lord and and plan accordingly and do whatever it needs to do uh, it's it's you know and probably you also have all sorts of your own problem is that true? Am I picking in the right directions? The big, small worries, things that are bothering your mind, and you've been, you know, impatient about something, hurts and uncertainties, worries, uh, health issues, uh, family problems. Would you please stand with me this morning? And we would want to t pause here and uh, plan for 2018. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You close your eyes and I want to invite you at the beginning of 2018 to, it really doesn't really, it's not really important the beginning of 2018 if you want my opinion. But since it is a measuring stick for us, it's, it's a good way to begin something and to rethink and decide to fix our gaze on something where the, the true success lies. Whatever happens in 2017, it's already over. 2018, we don't know yet. But eternal life is all that matters. One day we will stand before the throne of God to receive rewards according to what we have done, what we have been, to our obedience to the Lord, to the fulfilling of God's calling into our life. And while we were walking that road of obedience toward God, we faced all sorts of troubles and difficulties. Things to hinder us, things to discourage us, things to distract us, temptations and attacks. But today we want to gaze, fix our gaze on the eternal, look beyond the troubles that we can see now, and prepare ahead of the troubles that will come our way for sure. Even though we wish for a trouble-free year, trouble will come. The things that we see, these troubles that we will soon meet, will also pass. Maybe another year will be granted to us. Maybe some of us will not even be here next year. This is, these are not things we wish to anybody. But we are in the Lord. We are true Christians who have a true confess, a true faith. And the eternal word of God and the promises of God. The things we cannot see now that are written in the promises of God. Prophesied in the word of God, the calendar of God. Will last forever. So we pause this morning, and many here today, we have our own trouble. And we may face great troubles. And instead of focusing on the pain, on the worry, instead of focusing on the ultimate goal of God in our lives, just as athletes concentrate on the finish line and ignore the discomfort, go into strict discipline, we too 
No matter what happens to us in this year, we must focus on the reward of our faith. We must focus on the joy that lasts forever. And we need to be constantly reminded of that. And that's the good things about going from 17 to 18 or 16 to 17. This is a moment to remind us of the essential, of the eternal. Verse 17 says, It is working these troubles that have come, that are with us, or will come, are working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Our troubles should not diminish our faith. They also bring benefits that we reap. Our trouble causes us to look beyond the trouble itself to this brief life, this mortal life. These troubles help us to rediscover the eternal, the true success of life. Our meaning, our life's meaning, our ministries, to renew our dedication and our relationship to God, to think about the importance of our human relationship, broken relationships. Troubles give us opportunity to go through testing of faith. Trouble gives us gives God the opportunity to sh show us His power. So today we fix our gaze upon the eternal. And we wish for these things that we do not see yet as we begin this new year. Father, we thank you and we rededicate ourselves this morning in seriousness, in reality of what our mortal life is. And thank you, Lord, that we have these wonderful texts of the Bible that show us the reality of what's coming ahead, what you have prepared for us, and how we can reach that destination that will last forever. Lord, help us to focus and to fix our gaze on these things unseen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.